Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage. I'm Andrew Brogdon, and with the help of my partner, Gary the Graphics Guy, today we're gonna to talk about ad mob mediation. We'll cover how it works, what the pros and cons are, and then have screencasts in iOS and Android of sample Im implementations. All right, Gary, let's get straight into my app so we can talk. When you request an ad from AdMob, like this banner, a whole bunch of advertisers compete in an auction to see who's willing to pay you the most to display their ad. When the auction's done, the winning ad is sent down to the device for display. This competition between advertisers is one of the ways AdMob helps you maximize your revenue. Now, mediation is a way to have competition not only between different advertisers, but between entire ad networks. When you make a request for a mediated ad unit, the server returns a mediation configuration, or stack. It's a list of which networks to request an ad from, ordered by which one's likely to make you the most money at that moment. The SDK looks at that list and starts trying networks one at a time. And the first one to return an ad wins. This is where AdMob adapters come in. The mobile ads SDK uses them to wrap other networks SDKs so they all have a common interface. The beauty of it is that all of this happens automatically under the hood. As long as you make sure the other SDKs and their adapters are built into your app, there's usually no other mobile work required. So the plus side is that you have more networks of advertisers competing for your impressions, which can mean better fill rates and more revenue. The downside though, is that it can take longer to load an ad. And because you need those other networks, SDKs and adapters built in, your app size is bigger than it would be with just AdMob. Also, because you're now dealing with multiple networks, you have to register with them, create ad units in their network, and so on. How those pros and cons weigh out is up to you. A lot of smaller publishers prefer the simplicity of using AdMob alone, while for others, the chance to increase revenue makes the extra work worthwhile. All right, time to get our hands dirty. Let's take a look at how you can use the AdMob console to configure an ad unit to use multiple networks. It's the first step toward getting that mediation money. Is that Peruvian money? When did you go to Peru? All right then. Okay, so if you've created an ad unit before, you're probably familiar with this screen. This is the page that lists all the ad units associated with an app, in this case, my test app. I wanna draw your attention to the mediation column here though. You can see I only have one ad source competing for this unit and I'd like to add another one. So I'll click this link and I get a view of the ad networks assigned to the unit. And I can click the new ad network button and choose a mediated network to add to my ad unit. And you can see there's a bunch. For this video, I've actually created a fake ad network with an SDK and everything. Uh, it's called the sample network. It's just for this recording, so you're not gonna see it here when you set up your own ad units, but you're gonna want real ads from a real network anyway, because they result in a real check. And you can see I put in an ad unit here. Because AdMob uses the same SDK that you would normally, uh, you do need to have an ad unit for each mediated network. All right, so uh, now I've got two ad sources competing for my impressions, which is great. One thing I also wanna mention is how they get ordered. So I can come in here and set a hard estimate on the CPM for what I think that network is earning me. And AdMob will use that when deciding which network gets first try. AdMob also features something called automatic network optimization, which can order the networks for you based on how much money they're making. The server knows how much you're getting for AdMob ads, of course, and for many other networks, if you allow it access to your account, it can actually pull reporting data and then put it to use in determining which source should go first. Just make sure you're using optimization anywhere you see it offered. All right, once you've got an ad unit configured, the next step is to get the project building with the mediated SDK and its adapter. Let's take a look at how that works with iOS. First, I'll import the mediated SDK and its adapter into my project. Then I just need to rebuild my app and profit. Okay, that's money from a board game. You're an odd person. Okay, here are my steps, and I'm actually gonna do the first two at once. Uh, here's my app, and this is the project that I need to get that SDK and adapter into. So I'll turn to the AdMob Mediation Networks page. There'll be a link for this at the end of the video so you can find it easily. It's a great resource for anybody using mediation. It lists all our mediation partners, plus links to their SDKs, adapters, and instructions. So you can find out the exact steps for each network. Uh, some networks, for example, may have CocoaPods that you can just add to your pod file and import that way, uh, just like you see me doing, doing here. But my sample network just uses a static lib, so I'm gonna grab the files and drop them into a group. Again, every network has their own particular instructions, uh, so make sure you check them to see if they require linker flags, uh, like the Objective-C flag for categories or any other additional steps. 
Uh, all right, so that's it. That's all for the importing. Time to rebuild my app. And there's my mediated ad. Thank you, Gary, but that, that's actually kind of the point. Uh, you'll notice I didn't have to change any of my actual mobile code. Referencing the GAD banner view, loading the request, none of that changed, and yet AdMob was able to fetch the configuration from the server, then call into the adapter, which called into the sample SDK, and then came back with an ad. Pretty cool, and uh, the only step left is profit. All right, so that's iOS. Now let's try Android. As you can see, it's the same steps. Import, rebuild, profit. Gary, those are skee-ball tokens. OK, so here are the four steps again. And we're going to start with importing the mediated SDK. Here's my project that I'll be importing that SDK into. And the first question is, where do I get the SDK? A great resource, again, is our Mediation Networks page. There will be a link at the end of the video. This page lists all of our mediation partners and has links to their SDKs, adapters, and instructions. The instructions part is important because different networks distribute their SDKs and adapters in different ways. Some might host them on JCenter, for example, and I could come right into my build.gradle and just add a dependency for them and their adapters. Some networks also bundle the adapter into the SDK, so there'd only be one artifact to import here. Uh, the most common setup, though, is just jar files, which is how my sample network does it. So I'm going to cut these back out. So I'll drag and drop the jar into my project here and get it done that way. There goes the SDK. All right, so that was the jar for the SDK. Now I just need the adapter, which goes in the same way. There we go. All right, so now I've got the mediated SDK and its adapter imported into the project. Time to rebuild my app. Oh, and there's my mediated ad. The AdMob SDK gets the configuration from the server, goes through the adapter to the mediated SDK, and comes back with an ad. The only thing left is profit. So that's AdMob mediation. It's a little more work, but it's also more competition for your impressions, meaning more potential profit. Again, we use banners here just to keep things simple, but you can do other formats like interstitials and rewarded video as well. To help you along the way, here's a link to our Mediation Networks page, which has a list of all our mediation partners, plus links to their SDKs, adapters, and instructions. We've also got implementation guides for iOS and Android, so check those out. And as always, you're welcome to bring your technical questions to our support forum. And if you've got a question about this video or an idea for something we should cover, leave a comment below, and Gary and I will see you next time.